Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for being here this morning. Welcome to Lake Christian Church. My name is Sean Suttles. I'm one of the elders here. Um, just got a couple of few announcements for you. Um, we'll be uh, visiting the nursing home on the 25th of this month. Um, meeting here at Lake Christian Church at 1.30. If you're interested in being part of that, see Courtney Long. Also, um, if you uh, are a new member, we'll have a new member event coming up on the 29th. 11 to 1, food will be provided. Uh, see Chris Long if you have any questions about that. Um, there's a kids event coming up as well, um, pre-K through 5th. It's a Valentine's event. It's going to be on the 12th of February. And then lastly, we got the Shine event coming up on the 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. If you're interested in that, whether you're being a volunteer, you know somebody wants to participate in it, um, please see Aaron Stokes. Sorry, got a couple pages. Um, don't forget to see us on our website. You can uh, do offering through that. You can uh, catch up on some past uh, messages. That's lccpalmara.com. And <clears throat> if you have any questions about um, what a relationship with Christ is like, if you haven't found that yet, please see one of the uh, staff today. That's Chris or Aaron or one of our elders. Let's get you connected, okay? Um, I do have a scripture for you guys this morning. That's coming from... Sorry, coming from 1 John uh, 3, 16 through 18. This is how we know what love is. Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, <clears throat> how can you love the love of God be in the person? Dear children, let us not love with our words or speeches, but with actions and in truth. That being said, I have one other thing. Um, if you're looking for something to be connected with Lake Christian Church, um, there's so many different groups to be part of. You can be part of the welcome team. You can be part of the, the youth team, anything. Just reach out to somebody here at the church, and we'll get you connected with that. We cannot exist without our volunteers. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to join each other today and uh, get together and worship. Please open our hearts, open our minds, and allow us to take in the word that you're pushing out today through um, our minister as he preaches, through our praise team as they worship. Allow these songs and words to lift up our hearts and guide us to a life with you. Thank you for all the things you provide us each and every day. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, Lake Christian Church. Good morning online. Uh, I think hopefully we're up and running uh, on Facebook for those people that uh, couldn't be here today. Uh, we're still working all those kinks out every week. Um, why do we do worship? Anybody can yell out an answer. Okay. Lift our praises to the Lord. Any other reasons? There's no, well, there may be a wrong answer, but uh, there's, <laughs> we'll be very, we'll be very delicate if there is. <laughs> We, ha we have an opportunity to enjoy each other and to use uh, all of, the, all of the, the things, the gifts, the things, the, the, the enjoyments that we have uh, to spend some time, whether it be through spoken word of scripture, whether it be through song, whether it be through uh, any of those things, to give our worship to our creator. And that's what this corporate time is about. And so as we do that, I want to challenge you to participate in that, right? Uh, every week we talk about what, how, what we're doing, why we're doing it. Participate in it, okay? We are, we are a body that uh, wants to uh, show the world that we love God, that we love e the, each other, and that we love the world. And this is an opportunity for us to do that as well. So as we stand together, we're going to sing some songs. We're going to listen to some music. We're going to read some scriptures. Let that be your worship this morning. Stand with us. See my victory when all I see. 
Nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. So when I fight, so when I fight, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. Oh God, the battle belongs to you, and every fear I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Oh God, the battle belongs. There's nothing impossible for you When all I see are the ashes You see the beauty When all I see is the cross God, you see the empty tomb Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. An almighty fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows, you win.
Father God, thank you for the promise that we are yours. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that has come on you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when His glory is revealed. There's a grace when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And when I look at the space between Where I used to be and this reckoning I know I will never be alone There will be as another in the Standing next to me, there was another in the waters, holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free, there is a cross that bears the burden, where another died for me. There is another in the fire.
joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Father God, thank you for standing with us in the fire. God, thank you for being in this place today as we worship, as we sing, as we listen, uh, as we interact with each other. God, thank you that your son conquered death and left only an empty tomb as he prepares our way to eternity with you. Thank you. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Have a seat, everyone. What if we were known more for what we love instead of what we hate? Would that make a difference? What if we spent more time loving people and less time being angry with them? Would that make a difference? What if we gave unconditionally of our time, our talent, and our treasures? Would that make a difference? What if we shared the difference Jesus has made in our lives and stopped pushing away those who aren't there yet? Would that make a difference? What if we walked in the steps of our Savior, sitting with the broken, caring for the poor, loving the lost? Would that make a difference? We live in the midst of ruins, surrounded by brokenness pain, and loss. It's a moment made for us, a calling we were created to answer, not with judgment, not with harsh words or self-righteousness, but with love, the love of Jesus. What if the church acted like the church that make a difference? Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us in person. Thanks for joining us online. Middle of high school, you guys are dismissed at this time. If... Um, if you brought a Bible, just open up to somewhere, um, open up to Matthew chapter 22. That's where I'm going first, but um, you're going to have to keep up with the screen or you're going to be a really quick flipper today, <laughs> all right? Uh, we're in this series called Be Real, and uh, we're looking at our vision, mission, core values, evangelism, strategy, all those types of things. With the whole purpose of this whole series to say, we want to be real, authentic believers of Jesus. So let me just be real for a minute. Uh, I normally go to bed around 10 or 11 at night. And typically, on a typical day, I'm up by 5. Now, there's nothing... Typically, what happens is about three to four times a week, I wake up about 2 a.m., and then I'm up for the rest of the time. Now, listen, I know, I see some of your faces like, what's wrong with him? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I've tried taking melatonin. I've tried doing all these other things, all of that stuff, but here's the thing. When I wake up, I don't wake up tired, so I figured... It's just the Lord say it's time to get to work. Because here's what happens to me typically. Typically, as soon as I wake up, I'm one of those people that immediately my mind starts turning. And immediately I start thinking about all the things that I should have done or the things that I should be doing or the things that I have to do. But on top of that, what often happens is I also wake up thinking about the people that I've met with throughout the week and 
the struggles and the pain and the hurt that people are going through. Up until just a, a few months ago, anybody have a TV in your bedroom? Okay, that's of the devil. <laughs> You're sinners. <laughs> Up until three months ago, we had a TV in our bedroom and we only got rid of the TV because Courtney bought a new dresser and it came with this mirror and the mirror looked better than the TV, in her opinion. <laughs> and uh, what I would do is I'd wake up and my mind would start racing. I'm thinking about all those things I should be doing, about people and the hurts and the struggles that they're going through. And that would ha that would, I would start praying and that would last 30, 45 minutes. And then immediately I turn on the TV. Now, you all know what's on TV at 2 a.m. It's either really raunchy or it's an infomercial. That's right. And what happened is the last thing that I really needed in my life was a shake weight. The last thing I needed in my life was that putting green that you could sit on the toilet and practice your putting. <laughs> the last thing I needed in my life was the egg extractor. It's this unique device that takes off the shell of a hard-boiled egg. The last thing I needed in my life was another Snuggie. I'm going to tell you, those people on infomercials are really good salesmen, though. <laughs> because if you've ever done it, you've watched that thing, and I, I sit there and watch, and I, I got to see what's next. Like, what are they going to sell next? There are all types of gimmicks, right? And sales strategies. I know that most of you sitting in here or watching online have watched, uh, let's just do a little poll. Home Shopping Network, anybody ever watched it? Ever, really, yeah, QVC? Okay, no, not only do you have TVs in your bedrooms, you lie a lot. <laughs> I, how can you, I, I'm betting that some of you even purchase stuff at Christmas off of one of those things. I, how could you not with five flex payments of $5.84? <laughs> those channels and things are really good at marketing and at gimmicks. They're good at attracting customers to buy this product that they got. But what I want you to know as we get into our core values this morning is that all that we've talked about in our vision and mission and what we talk about today in our core values, what we'll talk about next week in our evangelism strategy, it's not just a gimmick. You see, what we're selling is Jesus. And I'm here to tell you it's no gimmick because you can't buy it at a low, low price. It costs God everything. We talked about our vision to love God, to love others, to love the world. Matthew chapter 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest of the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. That's where we desire every single person to be. In love with God, in love with their brothers and sisters in Christ, and in love with a world who doesn't know Jesus yet. How do we get there? We get there by knowing who Jesus is, growing in who Jesus is, and showing who Jesus is to other people. We talked about Jesus is the what? Remember from last week? Oh, my land. All right, go back home and watch that on YouTube next, uh, this week. Jesus is the way. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And this morning, we jump into our core values. It's not just a gimmick, but it's biblical advice on how we can be better followers of Jesus. Our first core value is everyone in relationship, okay? 
Everyone in relationship. In the New Testament, the Greek word alalon, which is translated one another. This word is used over 100 times throughout the New Testament. And in 59 of those times, it is a direct commandment to those people living in that culture and to you and I about how we're to live our lives with each other. Listen to this. Mark chapter nine, verse 50, be at peace with one another. Romans chapter 15, verse seven, accept one another. Be kind, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, Ephesians says. Don't complain against one another, James says. Love one another over 12 times in the New Testament. Through love, serve one another, Paul writes in Galatians. Galatians chapter six, verse two, bear one another's burdens. First Thessalonians 5, 11, encourage and build up one another. James chapter five, verse 16, pray for one another. If it's repeated, it's important. We were built for relationships. From the very beginning, all the way back in Genesis chapter two, says this, the Lord God said, it is not good for man to be what? Alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. We want every single person to be in relationship. And listen, I understand we live in a culture and a world where we're, we're doing things online and we're shopping online and we're watching church online and all those types of things, but I'm here to tell you we gotta be in relationship with other people. What that means here at Lake Christian Church is we wanna make sure that outsiders come before insiders. We wanna be reaching out to the people around us. People matter to God. What it also means for us is that no one stands alone. We're not out here just doing it on our own, but we got people building us up, encouraging us, challenging us, even in the simple things. This, let, me just, let me just share a story that I saw happen this morning. Troy had a flat tire on his car, right? He didn't know, it, well, it was actually on Aaron's car. You were out there riding dirty, your dad had to fix your tire. <laughs> he didn't even know, right? So look, I'm sharing information with you. Here's the deal though. Troy didn't even know that Aaron's car had a flat tire until Amanda came in and said, hey, I just wanted you to know, I think that black car is Aaron's and he got a flat tire. And then what happened was, Troy said, well, I'm gonna go fix it. Who went with you to fix it? See, I look good right here. <laughs> but I went with him, but it got too cold for me, so I left Cullen with him. <laughs> it's a simple illustration, but that's who we're trying to be. He shouldn't be out there changing a tire by himself. We got other followers of Jesus could be out there helping him. When, when someone in our family is sick, we shouldn't be having to deal with that alone. Our brothers and sisters come alongside of us. When, when we have babies and all those types of things, we, we ought to be coming together as the body of Christ, supplying meals to, to be with those people, to do those things. Everyone in relationship. That's one of the key points to getting in a small group. And we're pushing small groups this year hard. And most of you know we kind of transitioned Aaron from children's ministry into some middle and high school ministry and watching over our small groups and discipleship ministry. And so we're gonna push those groups. We've got lots of different groups getting ready to start. We've got some recovery groups getting ready to start. We've got financial peace getting ready to start, all those different types of things, starting along with all the groups that are already meeting. Everyone in relationship. We were built for one another. Secondly, everybody has a role. Ephesians chapter four, starting verse 11 says, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we reach, until we reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. You are a vital part of the church. Every single person. And we believe in a philosophy that you don't have to necessarily give your life to Jesus before you can start serving. There are jobs that you can do before you do that. 
But what we also know is that serving comes naturally to those who've given their lives to Christ. You know, we need people. We need friendly people on the welcome team. We need people for our media and technology team. I'm scared of heights. I shouldn't be up here trying to get that thing to work. We need people to help run the online stuff and the soundboard and the computer and the slides and, and all the different things that happen. We need people in our children's ministry. We need teachers and volunteers and all those types of things to help make sure that our kids can learn about Jesus. We need small group leaders. There'll be a lot more things that we need in 2023 as we keep going. You see, what we realize is that serving comes naturally. It's not an obstacle to, to those who give their lives to Jesus. We serve because he already served us. Everyone in a relationship, everybody has a role, and every program has reach. We, we don't just put programs together to have programs, but they gotta have a purpose. Matthew chapter 28 says this, then Jesus came, and, came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. Everything we do has to have a purpose. Everything we do in 2023 is all about helping people find and follow Jesus. We don't just put these things together. We don't just put together a shine night just so we can have a good time. We put together a shine night so a, a group of disabled kids in our community can come together, have a good time, and be loved on and supported and encouraged. Jesus said, whatever you did for the least of these, you did for me. We want to make sure that nobody, absolutely nobody gets overlooked in our community. Everything has to have reach. We want everything that we do put, puts the kingdom first. Whether it's a worship service where you come in on Sunday morning, we wanna make sure that that is a, an opportunity for people to hear the truth about Jesus. If we spend four grand in trunk or treat, we do all of that so people come through and they get to interact with followers of Jesus and find out that they're just real people. We have outdoor services and cookouts. We have a, time to go? <laughs> we got a new members class next week. I hope that you'll register for that online. We got a computer out in the lobby. If you haven't registered yet, you can go right to that computer and register for the new members class we're gonna have next week. We're gonna feed you. We'll have child care, all those things, just so you can learn about what Lake Christian Church is doing and how you can partner with Jesus first and foremost. We wanna make sure that they're directly helping our mission of knowing who Jesus is, growing in who Jesus is, and showing who Jesus is. Every program has reach. This next one is near and dear to my heart. We wanna make sure that everything is relatable. That's the entire point behind this entire series. Are we authentic and real? Matthew chapter four, starting verse 18, says this. As Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting their net into the lake for they were what? Fishermen. Not amazing followers of Jesus, not men of God, not Pharisees, not Sadducees, not any of that. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, he saw two, brother, two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing the nets. Jesus called them, and immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. 
those first disciples that Jesus calls are ordinary men. Ordinary. Now, if you read through the rest of the New Testament, you're going to find that they did extraordinary things. But when it comes down to it, they're just like you and I. They were real people with real jobs. They had real friends. They had real families. They had real problems. They had real bills. But they were also really committed to Jesus. They were sold out to what Jesus was doing. You know the number one reason people don't come to church? The number one reason people don't come to church is they feel like they can't relate to the people in the building. Anybody in here got it all figured out? Me either. But for some reason we put off that view to people you know why? Because we're not authentic. And I'm afraid we're not even authentic when we come into the building most of the time. You see, when, when, you, get to the, when you get to the parking lot, when you get out your car and you begin to walk in and you see my fat face sitting on the sidewalk, immediately this happens. <laughs> yeah, glad to see me. Yeah, right. I'm not that pretty. Because what you don't want me to know is that you just spent the night before and you went to bed mad, angry at your wife or your spouse, your husband. You don't know how you're going to make the bills the next week. You, you spent the 35 minutes it took you to get here screaming at the kids. And we put off that same view to our coworkers and the people around us as well. But what if we were just real, authentic followers of Jesus where we just admitted, you know what, I don't have it all together. I, I do have sin in my life. There are things that I'm currently struggling with. That's why everyone needs to be in a relationship so we got people we can share those things with. No one wants another fake. What people are looking for is real. They don't need you to be perfect. They just need you to be authentic. Everything is relatable. Instead of us putting on this thing like we're some special group, let's just go out into the world and acknowledge to the world and the people around us that we've got these things going on, but we're following Jesus and we're just turning that stuff over to him and hoping that we get through that and that he's in control. Lastly, every step by faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says this, and without faith it is what? It is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. God will provide the increase. I believe that by faith, but I also know that increase takes hard work. Scripture says you got to plant and you got to water, but God will make it what? He'll make it grow. Back when I was 15 years old, I went out to get my first real job. And the uh, first place I went was a little farm outside of Orange on the way to Locust Grove. Most, some of you who are older will know that because that farm was known for the pumpkin patch. 
I mean, they had pumpkins forever, right? So I got this idea. It was close enough to my house that I could get my parents to drive me out there, and I was just old enough that I could work, but I wasn't quite old enough to go, you know, to Food Line or one of those places and get, get a job, right? So I thought, well, I'm going to go to this farm. I'll get me a job on this farm, which will be perfect because I'll learn how to ride the tractor, and that'll be my days just plowing the field. Back if I'd be in the air conditioning, get me a cab, drive that, that'd be fun, right? I got there, and a guy gave me this huge ball of twine. And he let me ride on a tractor to the blackberry patch. And he put me out there, and he said, listen, in three days, I'm going to come by and bush hog these rows. I need you to tie up all these blackberries to the fence before I get here. Nothing. It was, 7, 000, it was the hottest summer on record in Virginia. <laughs> 7,000 degrees that summer. <laughs> and I'm out there tying up blackberries one at a time. And let me tell you, this row went on for eternity. Jesus was at the other end of that row. <laughs> and I got to the top. And when I got to the top of this little hill, it went on forever down the hill. <laughs> For three days, I tied up blackberries in the hot sun, and the only time I rode the tractor was back and forth from the barn. Let me be real for a moment. Day four, I get there. Guy hands me the same huge ball of twine to tie up blackberries. Let me just say this before I tell the rest of the story. This story happens before Christ in my life. I got out there at 6,000 degrees. I'm tying up blackberries for three. On day four, I began throwing twine in the woods and getting rid of it. I buried it under some of the bushes. I still owe that guy something. When I got, all I was ready to do is, I just want to be done with this. It's hard work. If we think that people are just going to flow into the building, if we think that people are just going to come in masses and all those things, it's not going to happen. It takes hard work loving on people and, and helping people through the crisis of life. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. God will be faithful. He already has been. He always will be. You can't program for faith. That's something you got to grow in. One of the most fulfilling things that's ever happened in my life is when I look back on those moments where I know that I've completely followed God. In those moments, and don't get me wrong, they are few and far between. But in those moments when I know that I've completely followed God and done what he's asked me to do and put things in the right perspective and been motivated by love because of what he's done for me, when I look back on those moments, those are some of the most fulfilling moments that I've had. Not some of the easiest moments, but some of the most fulfilling. Here's the thing. We have work to do. A chain is only as strong as its weakest link. That proverb by Thomas Reed dates back to 1786, but it still applies today. I'm, I know that there are deficiencies in my life in some of these categories. I know that there are deficiencies in some of these categories in your life. I just want you to know, I think in some years past, we've just coasted by and done the checklist things and we've done those things and we, okay, we do this event, we do that event, we do this thing and we do that thing and we challenge people, we do that. I've got extremely high expectations for 2023. 
I have high expectations for Lake Christian Church this year. I have high expectations for myself personally as a leader and as your pastor. I don't want to fail you. But I also have extremely high expectations for every single individual that comes into this building and says that they want to follow Christ. I don't want to just share this as some gimmick, but I want you to do something with it. The fact is, we need you. We need individuals who are claiming the name of Jesus to come alongside and partner with us to be a strong body of Christ. Are you in relationship with other people? Do you have some people in your life who are followers of Christ that you're pouring life into, they're pouring life into you? Do you have relationships with people who don't know Jesus? If you don't have any friends outside of those who already know Jesus, you need new friends. Every single person has a role. Where are you currently serving? What are you currently doing to make the body of Christ better? You say, well, I don't know where to serve. Come ask me. I'll share some places. Come ask one of our elders. They'll tell you some places we need people. Every program has to have reach the only way we reach lost people. The Great Commission doesn't say, hey, go to, go to the church and sit and wait for people to show up. No, it says, go and make disciples of all nations. We've got to be relatable, authentic, and real. And we've got to take every step by faith recognizing that God is ultimately in control. Here's the thing is we need you to buy in to these things. We need to come together to be a strong body of Christ. This is not just a gimmick, but a real biblical way to being better disciples of Jesus. We're gonna have to do those things if we're gonna be people helping people find and follow Jesus. I want to take you back all the way to the beginning of the message. Some of you are going, oh no, I hope he doesn't start over. <laughs> Let me take you all the way back to the beginning. You remember all of those infomercials and QVC and Home Network and all those things we talked about that they're really good sales gimmicks. And they always end those gimmicks with this idea that, hey, for this low, low price, five flex payments of $5.84, or if you buy right now, you can get two for the price of one. That's not how Jesus works. You, you can't get Jesus for low, low price. You see, the price that we cost God is everything. We cost him his very son. Jesus went to the cross giving up everything. Here in just a second, I'm gonna read a passage of scripture and then I'll give you a few moments. You've got communion sitting on your chairs when you came in representing the body of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. As we take this few moments, what we recognize is that it costs God everything. It, it costs Jesus everything so that we could be with him. It's a serious commitment. 
while I have high expectations for myself and for you and for this body of Jesus here in 2023, I think God has high expectations of you and I as well. He he doesn't want us just to go, oh, okay, we'll just take communion again and we'll just come and sing a song again. We'll we'll sing, here in just a minute, the praise teams will come and sing a song. Send us out, like we're going out to, uh, uh, well, just send me out to the door to the parking lot and then I'll be done. (laughs) God expects so much more than that. God expects so much more than just singing these songs about how God's going to keep us safe upon the waters and keep us from drowning in life and all those different things. God expects so much more than us just reading scripture or coming to, oh yeah, I went to church 48 Sundays this year and heard messages and all that's great. God expects so much more than that. What if the first apostles, what if the first disciples of Jesus just went, we'll just go listen to Paul and we won't go anywhere else. We wouldn't be here. And if we don't do something about it, the next generation won't be here. The church is always one generation away from extinction. Jesus took his role of going to the cross seriously, and we ought to take it seriously as well, too. I'm going to read from Philippians chapter 2. I want you just to reflect on what's being read. I'm going to try to read slow. Most of you know I read really fast, so I'm going to try to slow down and read this. But I want you to just think about what you're holding in your hand, what Jesus gave up so that you could have light. And I want you to reflect on your commitment. What is it that God's challenging you to do? Because he loved you. Philippians chapter 2, starting verse 5. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of of God the Father. Father God, Thank you for your grace, for your mercy, and for your love. And God, right now, we just stop and reflect on the fact that your son Jesus gave up his life for us. God, I pray that you would give us the courage and the boldness to reach out to our community and to those around us with the love of your son, Jesus. God, I pray that this won't be just another song we sing, uh, another communion we take, another message we've heard, another Sunday we've been in church, But Father, I pray that you would change us from the inside out, that you would truly send us out into the community to make a difference. That Father, we would recognize that time is not standing still and we're not getting more of it. But Father, time is running out and we should do all that we can to share the good news about Christ. Father, help us 
to be your servants. Help us to have that same mindset of Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of your son. And it's through his powerful name we pray these things. Amen. There we have it, the beginning of our challenge as we leave uh, this corporate worship and we continue our worship as we go out. Uh, we don't just leave this building having accomplished another thing. Uh, we leave this building on a mission uh, and that mission is to show others the way to eternity with God, with their creator. Uh, and you guys are set up, you're ready to go for it, right? Yes? Yes? There we go. Okay. Perfect. All right. Let's stand. We're going to sing this last song together before we, uh, before we head out this week. You love the world. such a passion You would not leave us all alone With grace that we could not imagine You called us your own You took the cross You took the cross for our redemption out of the darkness into light So make your gospel our obsession We lay down our lives We lay down our lives Oh, send us out like a river wild Our hearts ablaze with a holy fire See your glory, your kingdom come. We'll tell the story of what you've done. Oh, send us down. It's a little slower, but you can sing out. You called us out. You called us out into the nation. behind these walls We long to be a generation that will answer your call We will answer your call Oh, send us out like a river wild Our hearts ablaze 
feet to the lost and least of these. Send us out, send us, we will glorify your name forever out of shame. Sing out. We will be your hands and feet to the lost and least of these. Send us out. Oh, send us. We will glorify your name forever unashamed. Send us out. Oh, send us. Father God. These words that we have just expressed, God, I can say it no other way, but that it is my heart's desire that these be action as we leave this place, God. That these are not just words that we sing in the, in the walls of this dome or just in our minds, God, that they be our action that we be the hands and feet to the lost and least of these. God, I'm thankful for every person in this room. God, I'm thankful for you, that you created us in your image. God, that you sent your son to die on the cross for your creation, for us. God, and I'm thankful for the offering of salvation back to us. That empty tomb that gives us the hope of eternity with you. God, we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. We know that he gives the power for us to approach your throne so boldly. God, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.